Hi guys, welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today guys, today I have my review of Boosh, The White Rose, book three of the Black Company series. So I have been rereading The Black Company. This is the third book um, in the series, but also the closing book in what is uh, what was later known as the Books of the North. The Black Company series is broken up into three kind of sub-series, the Books of the North, the Books of the South, and the Books of the Glittering Plain, and each of those kind of ends a, a chapter in company history, um, quasi self-contained uh, to where you could go on, but there's no like, uh, there's no like gripping cliffhanger that that compels you to to keep reading on. Though I think that uh, I think the books of Glittering Plain, the last uh, few books, are uh, some of my favorites of the series. So um, there, there will obviously be spoilers for how the Black Company turned out and how Shadows Linger turned out because just the very situation the Black Company finds themselves in in book three is a uh, is a spoiler. The back of the book spoils kind of uh, the first book and the second book, so, uh, a reveal from the first book and then a reveal from the second book. So before you go, just know that uh, this book was fine. Um, it, I think it's the weakest of the first three books, um, but it is, I mean, it's a fine conclusion for those first three books while um, wrapping kind of everything up pretty satisfactorily while also setting up the, the upcoming books of the South. So know that, but if you haven't read the first two books, uh, if you care about the situations being spoiled, um, I'm going to start talking in spoilers for those first two books. And they are pretty big because of kind of the identities of some characters and uh, where the company finds themselves. So The White Rose picks up six years after Shadows Linger. And remember, at the end of Shadows Linger, they have turned against the Lady's forces. They are working for the Lady in the first book and really kind of the second book. Um, but then they turn because they have been betrayed by, uh, by the Limper and some people in the Lady's forces. And they've turned against the Lady in order to protect Darling, who is the legendary White Rose. And here it picks up six years later and they're camped out in the Plain of Fear. We got kind of a, a very brief overview of the Plain of Fear in the Black Company where they lost a lot of troops there because of this weird place that is just really kind of hostile to outsiders. And that's one of kind of the problems of this book. It's really hard to get into because you are thrown into the plane of fear. They've been there for years by this point and nothing is really explained to you. And it's just this bizarre like weirdo realm where there's like giant poison coral like growing out of the ground. And there's these wind whales, these giant flying whales that have like these deadly like explosive tentacles and there's these standing stones, these mean hairs that, that disappear and reappear and always say, they always say, Croker, there are strangers in the plane. If you saw my wrap up, I got various voices for them. We can try out some other ones here. Croker, there are strangers in the plane. <laughs> or, or, Croker, there are strangers in the plane. Or, Croker, hey, hey, what? Oh, strangers up in the plane. Or, whatever other terrible accent I can do. Who knows? They're talking rocks. Croker, they're all strangers in the plane. Croker, they're all strangers in the plane. Croker, they're strangers up in that plane. However you want. That's what they do. They reappear, they disappear, and they're, they, that's what they say. They say it all the time. And it's just, it's just really weird. You don't really know the rules of this this new place that you're in. And so that that makes it really difficult to get into this one, especially considering the opening of Shadows Linger with Marin Shed, and you're just kind of following this guy around and, and it's, it's really easy to follow here. Not so much. Now, Cook, once again in The White Rose, uses this multi-POV perspective, where Black Company was solely from Croker's perspective as the analyst of the company, writing from a first-person perspective. Um, Shadows Linger used Marin Shed as well as Croker, and we realize that Croker is able to be writing this in the annals because Shed has reported back to him um, once those two uh, parties meet and Croker hears his story and so recounts it in the annals that way. Now, here we have a similar thing, but instead of just one, we have two other POVs. One from Bowman's, the wizard who was responsible for releasing the lady. We now get his perspective, and this is kind of in the, uh, in not in the distant past, but in the past before the lady 
was re was revealed. So it's the it's the mid distance past, and then we also get the perspective of this guy named Corby, who is in the recent past, who is clearly investigating what's going on with Bowman's and where that that kind of storyline dovetails, and is sending and is writing these letters and sending them to the Black Company so that the Black Company is aware of Bowman's story. So Kroger is kind of getting this like second hand from Corby, the Bowman stuff, as the letters come in. And it's really hard to figure out how all of this kind of ties together until the end. Now, um, everything does tie together pretty neatly, and that's pretty cool. There's also this over, kind of like overriding mystery of who these newcomers are, uh, Tracker and Toad Killer Dog, who have joined the company and are allying in their quest against the lady right now. We don't know who they are, we don't know where they came from, and so the mystery surrounding them is also one of the, one of the driving forces in the White Rose. And so in the Plains of Fear, Darling is in charge of this, uh, of this rebel group. The army's not very big. It's most of the company, but the company is is actually relatively small at this point. Uh, Darling and Croker don't they're not they don't really talk like they used to. They're not really friends like they used to be. Um, she is very much hardened. She's a she's a, a grown woman now, uh, but she has this nullified. She has that null area which cuts off all magic, and she has to kind of drop it for sorcerers to be able to do anything. And this freaks out One Eye and Goblin. No one really likes being um, in the camp near her. We see Silent, who may or may not like have differ, different kind of feelings for Darling, but he's like her constant shadow and bodyguard. And so we see how those relationships are strained. We see, we learn more about Darling's relationship with Raven before he died in the last book and uh, how Darling feels about being left behind by Raven. In fact, that loneliness that Darling feels being surrounded by people yet still feeling alone is one of the themes that kind of runs through the White Rose. Everyone is kind of experiencing this this uh, this loneliness and what it's like to be to be alone and cut off. Not just Darling, but also also the Lady, also Croker and the rest of the Black Company and Tracker as well. We we get to to feel just how alone they really feel. That no one really feels like they have any any friends. No one feels like they have a, a much of a family anymore. They all feel like they're all together, but it doesn't really feel like they're fighting as a unit. That they're that they're there. Only, only out of necessity, that if it was not the lady and, as we saw in Shadows Linger, the threat of the Dominator trying to come back, and if it wasn't for that, uh, they all wouldn't be together. They don't really like each other, and everyone's kind of miserable on the Plains of Fear. And even out of the Plains of Fear, we see that the lady is also kind of miserable as we learn through Bowman's investigations and um, the letters that come. We learn that the lady is also kind of alone. She's this being of immense power, but who's she going to talk to? As we saw in Black Company, she has these, these moments of connection with Croker, but Croker turned on her. How do you feel when, when you're that lonely, you're at the top, and, the, and one person that you think you can connect with turns his back on you? And so this theme of loneliness runs through most of the White Rose. Now, it wasn't just the planes of fear that, were, that, that made me struggle with this book. The Bowman sections are just really slow. And it's really hard to figure out what the point is. We're like, I know, we know you free the lady. Like, we know that from the other books. But, like, who cares? Like, who cares about Bowman's perspective? It's just really slow, and it's hard to see why we need to see it for a long while. Um, there, are some, there are some nice themes in there. Bowman's section does deal a lot with dreams deferred and dreams denied of giving up certain things, sacrificing th certain things for other things. Bowman's has sacrificed a lot uh, to do what he is doing. Bowman's had, at one point, had dreams to be something different than what he is, but he put them on hold and, and you know, it's too late now, and now he's kind of committed to his course of action. We also see the, the grinding of a relationship under the teeth of time. Bake on a buttery uh, crispy crust. Damn. Flaky. I thought I said flaky. Okay. <laughs> oh Baked on a buttery flaky crust. Where Bowman's and his wife pretty much hate each other at this point. Um, and they didn't used to, but just the constant, uh, just the constant togetherness and has just like ground them down. And obviously not all marriages are like that, but we, but you know, 
<laughs> Sometimes that happens, and so we, we see that there as well. What I like about these early books in The Black Company is, rather than showing like full-scale scale warfare, yes, in The Black Company we have the, the battle at Charm, but for the most part, these first three Black Company books really show that war is less about troops in the field and winning battles, and is more about ambushes and surprise attacks and guerrilla warfare and stealing intel. What I think is interesting about these early books in The Black Company is it really does show that information is part of what really wins wars. The Black Company are searching for information. They're searching for information on the lady. They're searching for information on the dominator because they know that their army cannot beat them just fielding them uh, army to army. They've got to find a way to get a leg up. And the only way to do that is to comb through these ancient records, comb through these ancient notes, and try to find some kind of advantage. We saw that in the Black Company when they raid uh, Whispers, all of Whispers' intel. And so that comes back here as they try to find uh, something that they can use a, a, a against the Lady and the Dominator here as well. Probably the thing I like the most about the White Rose is how, how well Cook shows kind of the similarities between the Lady and Darling. They're both ahead of, they're ahead of opposing forces. They both uh, feel incredibly lonely. They have to cut everyone else off um, in, their, in their command structure and in their lives because they can't risk being betrayed. Neither one of them really asked for the responsibility that is on their shoulders, and I think it's really neat to examine how both the Lady and Darling's destinies, as, as the head of the Empire and the head of the Rebels, how their destiny kind of overshadows their personhood. The Lady is not a person. She is, a, she is an entity. She is a force to be opposed. Darling, really, in this book, isn't a person. She is a symbol of the Rebellion. And at times she doesn't want to do this anymore, but she has to. She is the symbol. And even before we found out that Darling was the White Rose, people were fighting under her banner. So both the Lady and Darling don't really have much agency in this battle. And I think, I think it's really interesting to look at how they're on opposing sides, but are really kind of the same. Uh, Cook explores um, identity and these personas that, that we take on for ourselves versus who we are. And, and who we are is in, in that kind of... Uh, in the the magical realm of true names as we as people try to as the company and others try to uncover the true names of these sorcerers but now things i didn't really enjoy as much about this book a lot of the stuff that i really liked from the first two book isn't here there's no real great character studies like the war with marin shed I, I mean i said there's some really cool stuff with the lady and with Darling, but we're not really close to them. We, we see them from a distance. We don't get their perspective. Seeing Shed's perspective just shed a light on... Shed is, is one, of, one of my favorite characters in fantasy. I think he's a great, just unlikable, despicable character that you can, be, that you can still be like, you know what, Shed? I get it, man. You're the worst, but I get it. And there's none of that here. There's none of the, the, the company camaraderie here because members of the company are off doing various different jobs. Croker is very much often alone with just Tracker and Toad Killer Dog. And so we don't get a lot of the play with Croker and even One-Eye and Goblin are kind of sidelined in this book. And so a lot of the, the in, inter, interpersonal connections among the company isn't here. In addition, we don't see a ton of the Taken. The Taken are just like, ugh, like, are they, who, whose side are the freaking Taken even on? Like, they're even less in this one than they were in Shadows Linger, um, even as enemies. And so, there's just not a, a lot of that there. The final battle that culminates, while uh, you feel a lot of the buildup and is building up to just this, this massive confrontation, is just, it's just over very, very quickly. And it kind of serves to kind of close out this chapter uh, of the Black Company books, but at the same time, I didn't find it very satisfying, at, at least part of it. There's part of the conflict that I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't see that coming, and that's cool. But the other part, like, the, the main climax that we're building to, just kind of, it's like a balloon that you blew up and then went, so it just, I, I just didn't, 
I, I don't know. The book didn't really work for me in the way the other books did. Um, and so this is, this is definitely my least favorite of the three books. And from the people I've talked to, uh, that seems to be a common uh, thought. If you liked The White Rose and it's your favorite of the books, please tell me why. The book does do a good job of kind of closing it to where if you stopped reading here at The White Rose, it told a satisfactory tale. You don't really need to keep going. But uh, because of what is set up, you definitely know that there are going to be more books, so you can either stop or continue without really feeling like shoved forward. Um, like, I gotta read it if you wanna take a break from a 10 book series. I am taking a break right now. My buddy Mark over at Slowly Read is doing a Black Company read along in 2021, and so I'm gonna put this, this series on pause until they reach Silver Spike, which is the fourth book, and then I'll kind of pick up and read it with them. On the Kingfin approval system, I give this book, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good minus, I guess. It's a good minus. That's the best I can give it. it, it it's, it's not in the fair category because I did enjoy it because I love The Black Company. Croker alone really saves this book. Um, so it's a good minus. Um, out, of, out, of, out of five stars, it's three stars. It's a three-star read. It's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I liked it. I didn't dislike it. It's just incredibly fine. Um, I didn't like it as much as The Black Company, and I really didn't like it as much as Shadows Linger. Black Company fans, let me hear your thoughts in the comments. Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Information for my Discord and Patreon are in the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.